And now we're talking with Michael Chapin. He's the CEO uh, and co-founder of RX Speed. How are you, Michael? I'm good. Thank you, Javier. How are you? Thank you. Very good. Thank you. So, uh, a new company that uh, it's pretty interesting concept because I mean a lot of people like to work in their cars and apparently everything is available now online, but it can be very confusing and uh, and very deceiving sometimes, right? Uh, that's true. It's not only confusing, but it can take a whole lot of time. There's a lot of car, there's a lot of car enthusiasts around the country. A lot of people spending time once they find a part finding out more information about it and then finding where to buy it. So how does how does the, the your your site I guess it's a site right I like a search engine uh, how how does it work exactly? I mean how yeah, do, how do you get you know, that how do you get all the data because I mean, it's pretty pretty I mean there's there must be a lot of it. Sure sure that was actually the big part of it. So the site is called rxspeed.com and what it is is effectively a search engine for performance aftermarket parts. So it's much like Kayak or Expedia or Travelocity.com uh, where you can search for a part and find where to buy it. We actually work with some of the brands and uh, SEMA as the organization to get that product data. It's one of the things we wanted is the best quality, highest quality product data. And then we go out around the internet and find where those products are being sold and match it all up in one place. So uh, you're absolutely right. It is a lot of data, especially because parts uh, fit vehicles, which is a whole other component. They're not just T-shirts in there. These yeah. are parts that actually have year, make, model, sub-model, engine type fitments. It makes it pretty complicated. Yeah, and pretty complicated, and people get like, I mean, people with experience doing this obviously know what they're looking for and what exactly works and doesn't, but a lot of people, if someone is starting in this, can be really, really confusing, and as you said, become very ex more expensive than it already is, right? Yeah, that's right, and, and, you know, there's all sorts of people out there, people that are just getting into the hobby, people that have been doing it a long time and already have, you know, incredible amount of information, but... You know, if we could build a tool that helps everybody, no matter where they're at, if they just want to search around and see what's available for their car, or if they already know what they want to buy because they've been listening to YouTube videos of the exhaust for a couple of months, and now they're just trying to figure out, you know, who has it, who has it in stock, uh, who's offering any coupons on it, and, uh, you know, who has the best price on shipping, those kind of things. Great. So you obviously have a lot of experience doing this. I mean, like, not only this, but, like, motorsports. What's, what's, uh, what's your background? I'm actually, I, I share the disease. I'm a pretty hardcore car guy myself. Um, a disease? I, I did work. Yeah. What's that? You, you call it like an illness? Like you're like, you're, a, you're, a, I think, you're addicted. You know, I, think, I think my mother knew I had a problem when she showed up one day when I was a kid and uh, the hood to my car was in her living room and the engine was apart in the garage. And yeah. She looked at me in, she looked at me in horror and wondering if I could uh, put this thing back together. But eventually I did. Um, and eventually I figured it all out. So that was kind of one of the things when we looked at the technology. You know, there was a big problem ahead of us, but, you know, how could we get it done? How could we figure it out? Um, but, you know, I worked uh, um, uh, as kind of a shade tree mechanic for a while. I had a shop with some friends. Uh, we built a lot of old German cars for some magazines and things like that. Um, I was fortunate enough to be around a bunch of cool car guys growing up. Um, and uh, I ended up doing some mechanic work in motorsport field, and then I also worked at uh, Skip Harbor Racing School for a while, actually running marketing for them. So um, I've kind of been all over the map and, and and ended up here trying to solve a problem that I've had for the past you know decade or so, which is you know trying to quickly find parts and quickly get a hold of them online. So, what's your favorite car that you have worked on? On like, I mean, I, I guess you have more than one. Uh, what what will be the first? I, I, <laughs> I have a couple, but don't judge me now. I have a 1992 Volkswagen GTI 16 valve. Wow, that for uh, I think 13 years now. I probably replaced every single nut and bolt on the car at some point or another, uh, and that's the one that I hold on to. So nothing crazy, nothing exotic. I actually have a, an infinity for for anything Volkswagen from 1985 to 1992. But you know, I certainly appreciate all other cars too. Yeah, uh, I I get I have the the privilege of driving different cars uh, from the media fleets from all the manufacturers, and uh, I, I I don't own a car at the moment. But people when people ask me what car would I buy, I always say the Golf GTI. I mean because that car is pretty much everything. I mean it's good design, good performance, very practical, and 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 can take it to extremes uh, extremes like you do with it. Yeah, definitely. I think you know it was partly because I'm an '80s baby. And the hot hatches of the 80s were something I, I fell in love with growing up. Uh, but there was a bunch of cool cars there, you know, front wheel, rear wheel drive. Uh, I love the old BMW stuff, too. Uh, I daily drive an old BMW. You know, it, it's just kind of one of those sweet spots that I fell into. But, 
Yeah, that doesn't change the fact that I had a lot of friends into uh, DSM cars, American muscle cars, uh, import cars, everything across the board. Uh, so I certainly have a pretty good appreciation for it all. I mean, it, as long as you're bleeding gasoline, you know, we could probably get along. Absolutely. So, Michael, uh, if someone is just starting to, to get into this, I mean, what would be your, like, your, your main advice? Uh, I mean... Uh, obviously it depends on budget, <laughs> I know it, but uh, besides that, I mean, what what is the right thing to do when you're working in a car, especially with aftermarket aftermarket parts, because cars are very complicated today. It's not just in the old, old time where you just like unscrew the radio and put a new stereo system. I mean, now you really have to be careful with what you're doing, right? Uh, you absolutely do, and I think uh, one of the benefits of technology is the access to information. So. You know, as much as you might have to dig through uh, some forums to find what you're looking for, there is, in fact, a lot of information out online. Um, so uh, as opposed to 10 years ago or so, when it was kind of hard to find other people doing the same stuff you were doing, you know, now you can look up online and connect with people that are anywhere around the globe uh, and into the same thing that you're into, you know. And that's also one of the goals of rxspeed.com is to try to take some of that information and put it all in one place, you know. We're, we're living in an era now where you can quickly find... Uh, your favorite hotel, restaurant, book a, pl book a flight to get there, have an Uber car ready to pick you up. And you can do all that from your phone in about 90 seconds. Um, but why should it take you a couple hours to be sifting through forums and finding, you know, ratings, reviews, and, and installation photos of parts? So, you know, as we're moving forward with the business here, um, if we can help put all that stuff in one place, I think it'll help the people who are just starting to learn and where they want to go look around. Uh, that they can start with RX Speed and see, hey, you know, what are other people doing in my car? Um, and, and what's that going to cost? That's great. Do you have any data already, or do you know what's like some of the few most popular cars that people keep working on them? Like, I mean, it's it's a, a hard question because I mean there are so many. But like, do you have any data what people are searching in your site now? Yeah, we do. We're, we're collecting a lot of information on the site now. Uh, we launched it just in the beginning of February, um, so we had about a million parts then. I think we have about a million and a half right now. Um, so we're still growing pretty rapidly here. So we're still adding retailers and more parts. Um, but if you look at the industry, uh, there are a couple of the more popular cars that, that uh, SEMA, the governing body, identifies. And other things like the Ford Mustang and the Ford F-150, surprisingly, is one of the, the, the largest uh, uh, search for and, and accessory uh, vehicles out there. Um, but, you know, we're going to know more along the course of the next year and, and into two years what people are really after, right? So if they're after specific categories, for example, if most people uh, are just buying intakes and exhaust, or if most people are looking at a particular car, we're going to be finding out all that information pretty soon. That's great. Uh, Michael Chapman, he's the CEO and co-founder of RX Speed. So thank you very much for your time, Mike. Uh, we're going to post a link of uh, your site on our social media pages and all that so our audience can uh, learn more and uh, connect with you too, okay? All right, Javier. Thanks a lot. Have a great day. Thank you very much. Bye. Este programa fue una producción de National Latino Broadcasting.